Hello YouTubers, my name is John. I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's March 2016 and I wanted to share some recent renovations I've done with my fiberglass trailer. This particular brand is called Burro, B-U-R-R-O. It's just like the Casita or there's several brands. The insides of all of these similar fiberglass egg trailers look almost identical so somehow they share the molds. This particular model I think they stopped making them in the early 80s. I was fortunate enough to buy this one from a local family that wanted to get rid of it. I painted the exterior, put in new floors, installed the toilet, did a few things that I'll show you in just a moment. Okay so we're gonna start the tour of my 1983 Burrow I think it was manufactured in 1983. It could have been manufactured much earlier. I know the company did go out of business in about 1983. So this particular model is either from the 70s or the very early 80s. But it tows really well. I've pulled it all the way to Yellowstone. I barely feel it behind my tow vehicle. And they're absolutely comfortable for one to two people. So let's get the, the video started and I'll show you around the trailer. Thank you. Okay, here's a long shot of the trailer. And as you can see, it's just a simple fiberglass shell. It does hold paint really well. I used Rust-Oleum enamel. I checked with the manufacturer and it's perfectly fine to use it on fiberglass. I tried to convert the tail lights to LED and I've got it almost finished. Uh, right now, they're still the old school bulbs, but everything works fine. It's been rewired. Here's a view of the back of the unit. You can, as you can see, there's a really nice window with slides, uh, spare tire holder, and uh, nice tail lights. And what you see there is the um, water fill um, for city water which I don't use. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, this unit came with an air conditioner. At first I was gonna pull it out because I'd rather have the window there, but after my first camping experience at a KOA in the summer, this baby, I tell you, it's an old school air conditioner and it will chill you to the bone. So I decided to leave it in because most of the time I'm at a campground plugged in, it sure is nice to have that air conditioner. There's the outside of the um, trailer, and as you can see, there's a stone guard in place. Um, that really comes in handy. Uh, the propane tank is on the front, and then you see the two vents on the side for the refrigerator and um, also for the propane stove. Now, I will tell you, I, I pulled the refrigerator out of this unit because it was old and rusted. It was a three-way, but... Um, I really saw no utility in all that extra weight. I typically just bring a cooler with me and I'd rather have that space for storage. Besides these RV refrigerators, I've had experiences in my fifth wheel. When they fail, you won't know it and your food spoils. It's just much easier to bring a cooler, in my opinion. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now I'm inside the trailer. And as you can see, there's a dinette. Um, this one has pre-drilled and finished holes to hold your beverage containers, which it does come in handy. Um, there are storage underneath those two bays. And that table um, breaks down and forms the support for the sleeping area. I'm six foot four and I weigh about 210 pounds. I can totally stretch out on a diagonal and I'm perfectly comfortable. I purchased a six inch Tempur-Pedic mattress from um, Amazon. It's actually not the Tempur-Pedic brand, but it's, it's a knockoff and it's super comfortable. Um, so there you go and there's the air conditioner. Okay, now I'm sitting on the dinette side um, on the bed. And as you can see, there's a second table I just installed today. Um, there were two bunk beds there, but they were super uncomfortable and very narrow. You'd have to be like a stick person to be comfortable or a very small child. So I pulled those out and as you can see there's a storage bay 
and a storage bay. So I put, I made that a little seating area and that works really well. And I also installed the toilet. I'll show you that next. So this is the storage area right next to the door of the RV. And I decided to make a sawdust toilet there because oftentimes in the rain or inclement weather, you don't really want to get out and use the campgrounds facility. So for emergency purposes, I did some research and installed the sawdust toilet, which I will show you by lifting up that pillow. And voila, there is the sawdust toilet, completely odorless, completely sanitary. There's a five gallon, uh, five gallon bucket below there filled with sawdust and also spare dry sawdust to cover the waste when you're finished. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you, this is only for emergency uses, but believe me, it has come in very handy before. And it's, as I said, it's completely odorless. When you're finished, you just um, zip up the plastic bag in there and throw it in any um, dumpster. It's, it's better on the environment than a Pampers diaper, which is plastic lined. I use um, wax paper bags that you can buy that are completely biodegradable. So the sawdust uh, really just forms a mulch. And it's, as I said, it's completely odorless as long as you cover your waste. Um, there's a little table I just installed. Um, I can also pick that up if I had to and use that as a support and put a mattress on there for somebody to sleep on. There's the other area, uh, there's the window, which is really nice. And then I'm gonna stop and show you the kitchen and the closet. Okay, that's the kitchen. It's very small, but um, as you can see below the tea kettle there, that's where the refrigerator was. I pulled that out and I used that as storage and it's so much handier than that old three-point refrigerator. The refrigerator was super heavy and it really didn't store that much. Uh, my cooler holds a lot more, and I can even keep that in the trunk of my car if I want to. Um, it does have a sink. Um, I do not use the um, fresh water supply because this is a really old unit, and um, I just use that sink really to wash dishes, etc. But um, I bring a five gallon filtered water jug with me, it just works a lot better for me personally. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now I'm sitting on my cafe table on the other side of the uh, RV. There's a closet, which actually is pretty generous. I'm, as I said, I'm super tall and my clothes hang in there just fine. Um, there's the bed area with storage underneath. My table, which swivels and turns around. There's a view of the kitchen. That's what they call rat fur, which covers the seam on the top, along with the vent on the ceiling. Okay, and let me just slide over slowly. Closet, there's the door. And then that other side, as I said, is the other seating area. Um, it's also the toilet underneath. Now, some, some people have commented, well, gee, who would want to use that toilet? There's no privacy. So what I did is I hung a shower curtain. As you can see, there's the line that slides across and there's the toilet. And I, as I said, this is not ideal, but um, believe me, if, if somebody really has an urgent need and if you are camping, the other person could step outside and then the um, user could simply slide that shower curtain across and have complete privacy while they do their business. So again, this is not ideal, but it's kind of like a marine toilet, which means something you'd find in a small boat. And people may be critical of it, but believe me, if you've ever had food poisoning while camping, um, because I have up in Yellowstone, it saves you hundreds of trips to the um, campground restroom. And I am sure glad I had that when that happened. So anyway, folks, this is my burrow. As you can see, there's some storage above the stove. Uh, there's the sink, more storage there, um, more storage underneath there. I really enjoy this unit. It tows really well behind my Subaru Forester. And as I said, I've pulled it all over up to Yellowstone and all over New Mexico, up mountains, I've crossed the Tetons. I do not have trailer brakes. Now, 
This unit is under 800 pounds when it's dry. And Subaru says it's okay to tow any vehicle without brakes that doesn't exceed about 900 pounds. So I'm right at the limit, but um, I did just fine going up and down and across the Tetons. You just have to take it easy. But if any of you are interested in purchasing a unit like this, um, I found this on Craigslist. It was in really bad shape. I restored it, put new floors in, as you can see. I've really enjoyed it. It's simple, it's inexpensive, it keeps you dry, it's awesome, and it garners a lot of compliments and attention when you're out at a campground. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this show.